I just added game changing technology to this tractor right here. Let's head on inside the cab and take a look. From this spot in the cab, you aren't able to see all the technology yet, but those are your two first big hints. And the third hint is inside this screen once it boots up. We gotta navigate and find it. And here it is. It is a central tire inflation system that we installed on our rear axle of this 8R tractor which will be pulling our planter for this spring. The system we installed is called a central tire inflation system or CTIS for short. And what it allows me to do is it allows me to go inside this display in the cab and actively change the tire pressure on the tires of the tractor, which might not sound overly exhilarating, but it actually makes a huge difference to me as a farmer with this new capability. If I start the tractor up, it'll then tell me on this screen if I unlock the system, I can hit this button right here and it'll test the amount of pressure that's in these back four tires and it's going to test that's what it's blinking for and it's telling me that there's 28 pounds of pressure in these back four tires and then if I want I can come in here on this screen and this is my preset this little tire with the arrow sign up that is what my tire pressure will be fully loaded and then here with the arrow sign down that is what my tire pressure will be in the field so if I want to adjust the tire pressure from 28 down to 26, I just hit this arrow with the up, and now it is siphoning get, er, air. You can hear this little module back here is taking air out of the tires. And this is actually pretty new technology. I just learned about it about six months ago when we started kicking the tires on potentially putting this on our tractor. And the way it works is on the other side of the tractor here, there is an onboard compressor, which if we need to add air to the tires, it starts to pump air out of here the pre the pressure tank and then there is a little hydraulic motor and a radiator alternator everything back here that powers the compressor so when we need to fill air in the tires we're able to but this still isn't the most exciting part because the most exciting thing is the fact that this system we just installed has the potential to save me and make me a lot of mucho dinero i say it has the potential to make me a lot of mucho dinero but let's talk about why, because it might not be for the reason that you're thinking. With this tractor being the only tractor that we run the planter on, on my family's 2,000 acres, 1,000 acres of corn, and 1,000 acres of soybeans that we farm, that means these four tires will go over all of those 2,000 acres. And I say 2,000 acres, but that's technically not right, because those main duels on the tractor, those line up perfectly with the main frame tires here on the planter, so they don't cover the outside edge rows on the actual planter. If we take, for example, our other 8R tractor here, which doesn't have the CTIS system, but has the same duels, this tractor used to pull this planter. So these tires right here, these run in the exact same tire paths as these main frame tires. And the importance of that is because that means we have one, two, three, four, and then also on the other side of this tire, we have five and number six over there. So we have a total of six rows that run right next to the main duels of the tractor. Those six rows there in the back, those all run right next to all the rows of corn and soybeans. They all get run right next to these big heavy duels on the tractor that holds most of the weight of the tractor. And that's important because there's a lot of weight and a lot of compaction because of how much load is on these tires. And since before the CTIS system, we weren't able to change the pressure in the field and then raise it back up to go back down the road because a tire needs more pressure on the road just because it starts to heat up the faster and faster it goes. We're now with that new system, we're able to decrease the pressure, make a wider footprint with the tire. And also, now we're gonna get into some of the mucho dinero I was talking about. In total cost, the tire inflation system we have on this tractor now, we have $30,000 invested into it. It's a one-time cost. There is no licensing fee to activate everything inside the cab. So I'm expecting $30,000 as a one-time payment for this technology. And like I mentioned, with these back duels impacting six different rows of crop that they are running right next to and pinching the seed and forcing compaction, that equals 25% of our planter width, which is 24. So that means we are decreasing yield on 25% of our acres when we're running more pressure in these tires, 
which is forcing more and more compaction to the ground. So now I'm gonna be saying that I'm gonna be saving or improving my yield on just six individual rows. For demonstration purposes, I set up these six cones, which are basically resembling six different rows of crop. And you can see each individual row is at least touched by one side of the tire and some are touched by both tires, impacting yield because of the compaction forced on these seeds when they start growing early on. Now my favorite topic, the money side of things. So we have a thousand acres of corn and these are gonna cover 25% of our rows or six out of the 24 rows. So that's 250 acres of corn, which should see a yield bump. And I'm gonna be using Beck's performance research studies where they saw a three bushel per acre increase where they were able to lower the tire pressure in the field versus what people run with on the road. So using that 250 acres times three bushels per acre, that means I will get at the end of the season across all of our fields an additional 750 bushels of corn. And the math is almost the same on soybeans, a thousand acres times 25% is 250 acres. Beck's performance research studies saw a one bushel increase, meaning I'll have an extra 250 bushels of soybeans because of putting this system on the tires. And those bushel increases of 750 bushels on the corn and 250 bushels on the bean side of things need to equate down to dollars and cents. So 750 bushels times an average cash price of 450 means I will earn my farm an additional $3,375 just on my thousand corn acres that I'll run the planter and tractor over. And on the soybean side of things, my 250 extra bushels times $10 means I will earn my farm an additional $2,500. Adding up those two dollar amounts means this system on my tractor will earn my farm an additional $5,875 strictly on the yield improvement from less compaction. That roughly $6,000 I'm gonna be earning additionally because of this system. Like I said, the cost investment was 30,000. That means in roughly five years, I'll have this system paid off. So about a 20% return on investment is what it's looking like for my farm. That doesn't even go to account for all the additional benefits such as it's gonna help the tires last longer because I'm gonna be running them at the proper rate of pressure in the field and on the road. I also am gonna be using less fuel because with a flatter tire, it's gonna take less of fuel consumption to turn that tire. So there is a lot of other benefits aside from the yield side of things. Also gonna be decreasing my compaction in the field, which is improving my soil health. So those things are kinda of hard to measure. That's why I just went into what Beck's performance research studies had showed. So in about five years, hopefully this system would paid for itself. And down the road, I could also add it to the planter because I already did add the hook up here in the back. A lot of people are adding these to their planters, the back four tires of the planter. That's an additional like $15,000. Wasn't in the cards for this year, but potentially something like that may be added. All in all though, I am really excited to run this CTIS system this spring. I plan on running some trials where I have different rates of tire pressure just to see if it makes a yield difference if I'm able to see it all season long. If you're interested in seeing that, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below because I'll definitely be making content about that. As for now, we do have like 18 million other things that need to get installed inside this tractor, so we're gonna get to that. Here's everything inside Air Force One, which is the planting tractor. I'll go into that in more details in a future video. But now, since we don't have the central tire inflation system on the front tires, I need to double check that this is set correctly. So when we hook this up to the planter, the tractor's ready to go. That's everything we need to get done on the 8R today. We're not gonna hook up the planter today because mom and dad still have some treating they need to get done with soybeans and once we get the planter hooked up, we're not gonna unhook it again until the end of planting, which is hopefully the end of May and not the middle of July like it was last year when we had 13 inches of rain. So we'll hook up the planter later, but the next thing I need to get done today is here's our chisel plow. We ran this last year over all of our soybean acres for tillage and this never got power washed off, so we're gonna pull it out, get her washed off. Let's 
see if we can get this thing folded down. There we go. Fold her out, and then we'll start washing. We got the chisel plow all washed off. Honestly, we usually leave a couple pieces of equipment until the spring to wash off. Especially the last couple years because it's been so dry in the fall, we're afraid we're gonna run out of water in the well, so that's why we left it. Eek, eek. I was pulling the chisel plow from where we had it down there and yeah, for some reason the hydraulic all of a sudden stopped. So only the fingers touched the ground, but Looks like I raked the yard a little bit. Dad's gonna see this and ask me what the heck happened. And honestly, I think the hydraulic must be leaking a little bit on the tractor, so I just shut off the hydraulics to the implement. It'll stay up now, but yeah. Good thing I caught that before we went all the way around the yard. I'm glad we got the chisel plow cleaned off for today because next week is the week we're gonna be changing and taking all of our winter projects that we have in the front of the shed, moving them to the back of the shed, bringing all of our summer equipment out to the front of the shed, starting to service it, more than likely get the planter out, start running through all of those things. We have a lot of things to do because in less than 30 days, we'll likely be in the field, which I'm super excited about because then I can try out that new CTIS system, as well as something else new that I'm gonna be putting on the planter for this year. That's all I have for today's video. Before you go, I'd ask you if you could please smash the like button for this video. It's not gonna cost you anything. It's just gonna help the algorithm. I'm trying to help my videos get more of a reach. So if you could, give me a like on this video. But that's it for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.